Thank you, Jyotika. First, I want to compliment Human Rights Defense International and Global Organization of People of Indian Origin for organizing this seminar on such an important topic. As you are all aware, women's rights include human rights. They are a very major part of human rights. And uh, as Josika rightly said, when we are talking about Indian diaspora, everybody is using the term NRI. It's not necessarily NRI. So I will just clarify some things in my uh, address. What uh, National Commission, as a member of the National Commission of Women, I have to talk from the viewpoint of the National Commission of Women. And what we are very concerned about is uh, Indian women who are trapped in marriage with overseas citizens, what they call NRI marriages. You see it's this dream in a lot of villages, especially in uh, Gujarat, Punjab, Kerala, to get a NRI cash. Violence against women is undoubtedly a reflection of women's subordinate status in society. Another manifestation of this unequal power relation, which is prevalent in the states of uh, Punjab, Gujarat, and Kerala, among others. I'm just saying this, I mean, don't take it in a wrong light. I'm just mentioning these states because they have a lot of these problems. Uh, is the desertion of married woman by her non resident NRI Indian husband or overseas husband or husband who lives overseas? Most of these marriages are solemnized in a hush-hush situation. Uh, the boy comes to India, immediately parents match, uh, they don't even match the maroscopes, they don't even take out the date, otherwise in a traditional Hindu marriage it's always ki ye tarik tara dhubha hai, tara nahi dhubha hai, tak shadi ho gai, mahi ho gai But when it relates to a NRI marriage, suddenly you know everything seems okay and they overnight the marriage is arranged and you know within a week the man goes back also. So what we call these are honeymoon marriages because the woman gets uh, deserted and there is barely any commitment on the part of his bridegroom or his family. The question that has uh, been asked to me many times is what motivates these men to marry when they have an intention not to honor their matrimonial obligations and this remains a mystery because whenever we have spoken to the, the US Embassy, New Zealand, Australia, these are countries, Canada where they mainly go, uh, all these people ask us that what motivates these men to marry and they deserve. So we are still trying to find out the answer that, but what it appears to us is that normally these men come home and they want a peaceful life and if they come under family pressure and to appease their parents they who want an Indian bahu, Gharilu, Hindustani, Sanskarwali bahu and despite that they get married. Uh, this phenomenon is not new but it's coming to light. I don't want to dwell too much on it because there are some other issues and I don't know what is the time constraints. But I just want to say that the problem like uh, one is that it's not only about women getting abandoned. In Punjab, you see the states, other states, they have different issues. Like in Punjab, the man comes, he marries her. And then he deserts her and goes back. The marriage never gets registered. That's why all the functions where I have addressed the women, I have said, if the marriage is not registered, he has no intention to take you overseas because spouse visa can only be uh, you know, obtained on, re on a registered marriage. In Gujarat, it's slightly different. In Gujarat, for Gujaratis, going overseas is not much of a problem. Uh, you know, because everybody has relatives in overseas and they go on to foreign countries quite uh, frequently. Then what happens is, in the late marriage, the girl goes overseas and she realizes the husband is already in a relationship and then he treats her badly. So the problem of women being abandoned in India includes demand for dowry, cruelty, forms of harassment, abandonment of the woman on foreign shores, and marriage of convenience, concealment of pre-existing marriage. He's in a relationship maybe with a foreigner or an Indian or he has a marriage and he conceals that. And it's only too late that the parents who have the possibility of liquidating all the assets to help their daughter enter into so-called marriage, wake up and approach the state authorities. I I am sorry, I have to be very blunt about it, but I blame the parents. It's their parents who want 
you know this so called nri bright room ki foreign dhula hona chahiye and they don't think about they don't verify what are his antecedents they don't verify whether he is deposed to single and another thing which we see in punjab is ki ye nahi ki meri ladki bahar jaye main apna ladka bhi desh bhejna chahta hu to jaise hi videshi ladka aata hai woh apni ladki ki shaadi karata hai overnight ki raaton raat ladka aata hai subah shaadi ho jati hai kyunki koi aur usko pakad lega so you see this is some kind of you know you bargaining what is the when we talk about human rights what is the right of the woman what does she have to uh, say in this matter i just want to identify some of these abandoned marriages from according to us they fall into three categories one is the woman residing with her husband in a foreign shows where she is already living with a man overseas and she suddenly finds her husband has disappeared leaving her you know or he then he abandons her then one is when she is residing abroad and he deceptively brings her behind or takes away her passport leaves her without money and visa without any means of rejoining him and the third is when she is married in india he never takes him her away now i just want to uh, tell you about some technical i'm sure we have our experts who will tell you about the case law some technical problems which we face because the nri cell has been set up in uh, the national commission of women so we can write to the external affairs and embassies and we have the authority to handle these cases but one of the problems faced is that nri bride dula what does nri mean like jyotika said you know nri is just a income tax term the girls or the girl's parents don't know what is his status is he indian citizen or a work permit is he foreign national or is he uh, what is his exact status because until you know the his citizenship hum ye kehte hain ki nagrikta jana bahut zaruri hai because on the basis of that the law will move and also uh, they you don't see let's say a uh, fire case is filed on domestic violence of 498a he doesn't come he won't appear his parents won't appear and then warrants are issued and then noc is issued noc i don't want to go into details and the different times noc is issued in the foreign country but how can the noc be executed because you don't know where he is so which country will be location is important for opening of noc so these are some technical things i got some books which you can uh, you know which are just for awareness on these issues we can just distribute them if you like and then it's been consistently i just you know why that we have another two minutes i just do uh, consistently you know people have asked us that is ka what to do about it how do we go about it should we change the laws even the parliamentary if you read this book i got this book along with me some copies if you read the parliamentary committee Oh, women, they have said, "Key change the laws. You know, change how it may change the Succession Act, change custody, uh, property, how it may Hindu Marriage Act, change all of them. But you know, it will help solve the problem. But I don't think this greed for sending your children abroad, your daughter bargaining your daughter's life, the laws are going to help because anyone who wants to evade the law is going to do it. And secondly, I think there's some very small administrative measures." can be taken which i must appreciate uh, the gujarat government in this because like uh, when you get uh, your marriage registered there is a typical marriage registration form and so what i told them was that all you needed to add was a simple column in the column was are you passport holder yeah, uh, sorry are you passport holder yes and photocopy so automatically if there was a passport holder it would you know it would become clear which passport he is holding indian or foreign and his visa and all his status would be clear so in case tomorrow there is a problem the woman can go back to court access that document and she will know that which country he belongs to and what is his status so uh, this was just a suggestion made and uh, luckily enough the minister for women and child is also the minister was in the last term uh, was the minister of revenue and minister of road building and everything and the way and uh, an our minister of nri affairs and they make this administrative change which is totally you know it was a simple administrative action you know
no legislation was required and they did it. And it has brought relief to thousands of women in Gujarat. So this is just uh, you know, one of the main issues which we are facing and as NCW because we have been made. And also just for your information since you people are, uh, you know, the whole diaspora is here. You, if you are not here, you are in touch with people. I just want to give you this. There is a whole list of women's organizations who are uh, in this and there is a helpline in USA. This is only for USA in which you can access the helpline from any part of the country, some of them. And you can, they are in Hindi, Bengali, Punjabi, Gujarati, in any language. It's not for English medium, you know. So if you have the number and you can help people, you can circulate it because I see lawyers and other experts here. Plus also phone numbers and other addresses are here. And I just wanted to tell you that in 7th July, like I told you, 2000, 24th September 2009, we became a part of, we, NCW was given this uh, powers to directly deal with NRI matters and NRI self open and uh, now you can you know contact us and we can Ministry of Overseas Affairs also has some schemes up to one and a half lakh for women abroad who are abandoned or something uh, which many people in the Gulf a lot of women uh, because you see uh, need to uh, access it so they can the details of which are in this book and uh, Another burning issue I think most people hear are about is the right to abortion, medical termination of pregnancy. I think that was another issue which the diaspora had taken up because one of our own sisters, Savita, she died because of it. I just want to say that of course that's a, uh, another independent state who has the right to make laws. But the fact remains that in India, being a conservative, relatively conservative society, we are not open to modern ideas. I just want to say that in India, our Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act is quite advanced and uh, repeatedly changes are being made. And also, these two cases came up one in the Supreme Court of Nikita, in which, you know, at um, 24 or 26 weeks, she discovered there was a congenital. Uh, problem with the heart and another case in which the child had uh, encephaly a condition in which the brain is not uh, you know brain is not formed and there's hardly any skull so if the woman need, does not need to if she goes through the pregnancy full term child will be born dead so you know these are issues we are taking up and because we are very concerned and I also want to say that the medical termination of pregnancy act in India irrespective of anything the woman life is of prime importance. So though there is a 20 um, weeks gap after which a termination cannot be done, but in case the woman's life is at stake, she won't die. So I would say that India is far more advanced and we are very much, we at least respect women and we, can, we are concerned for women that her life is more important than anything else. So thank you very much and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Shal. Actually, Chanul has given an idea that in this HRDI website, we should start a page concerning the legal issues because informally we come across many people who really have problems, who have married their daughters abroad or who have their sons or their children abroad about their laws etc. They are in distress as to from where to find a solution. So from the, from the words said by Dr. Chow, we feel that we should also start a page of legal assistance on HRDI and we need to give a link of NCW on, the, on our website so that all those women who are in distress, all those women who are suffering because of the laws abroad and the marriages done by the citizens of the foreign country should get the recourse through us. And uh, bef uh, before we continue with this academic discussions, I'll invite a member of the family. May I have Anmul Haq Ansari, who is with us. Somalian pirates, who are living in the world, 
इनकी क्या परिस्थिति है वो आज हमारे बीच है और एच के माध्यम से उनको विभिन्न मंत्रियों से मिलवाया गया तो मैं उनसे अनुरोध करूंगी कि अपने अपने शब्दों में जरा सबको बताए कि किस प्रकार से आपके भाई अपने क्या किन कठिनाइयों से किन मुश्किलों से वजूद रहे हैं अनुरोध रख सकते Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Anil Hakan Sari. I am coming from Lahore. Today, with some urgent request that you all, I need to help uh, that highlighting a serious matter regarding piracy attack on Royal Grace. Total of 33 crew members. 17 Indians, 3 Nigerian, 1 Pakistani and 1 Bangladeshi are under their custody since 22nd March 2012. It is more than 10 months now they are under the captivity. The ship owner of vessels, Royal Press, has clearly told that the, they cannot pay the ransom amount as <coughs> do not have any money. He does not even have insurance of the ship. He just bought the ship before its voyage by taking loans from various sources. The, Niger the negotiator was continuously calling the ship owner, but now the ship owner is not at all responding to the pirates at absconded. The pilot and the negotiator has given a deadline of 20th December. The government has to help us to arrange the ransom amount of 1.7 million dollars. We have approached to shipping minister Mr. G K Vasan, external affairs minister Mr. Salman Gursi. And IMG interministerial group since last six months, but no positive response from their sides. Yesterday we got tearful calls from our family members that they started torturing by beating them very badly. This is happening from last two days. And all the crew members, irrespective of age, they died and beaten them badly. They are crying over all, and situations is getting really worse because the other ship empty. Smurly from where they got food supplied are coming is getting released by 20th December. So post 20th December, food supply will be nil. And there will be cause for pirates. The physical torturing already started, and our family members literally in hell. When there is no help from our government till now, there is no other way we have to arrange the money. There is an overseas fund also. Through this government can easily help this 17 Indian sailors' life. Please request the concerned people for the approval of 1.7 million dollars and call the negotiator for royal prayer ship and request for the same and early release of crew members. We have the number of negotiator. Thank you.